Hi everyone, and welcome back to yet another video here on Navisim 101. And uh, this location that I've chosen is Ibiza, which is part of the Balearic Islands. I've actually chosen the jet blue livery. Uh, there's nothing blue about it apart from the tail fin, which is uh, dedicated to the fire department of New York City. What we're going to do today is touch and goes, all right? Because I, I think that one of the best ways to learn about this aircraft is just to keep doing takeoff and landings. <laughs> Strangely enough, but this is what this is what they do in the real world. They just uh, sometimes they do like seventeen takeoff and landings apiece, you know. So yeah, I just thought is uh, why not do this? Uh, my my takeoff and landings are not, you know. <laughs> not perfect, you know, I need swatting up on that, so uh, yeah, why not join me and uh, we'll see what we can do okay, so uh, we'll just get the stairs connected wow, that was a strange sideways move by the ramp vehicle okay, so let's just make our way up the stairs and uh, straight into the aircraft, excellent Let's now get into the cockpit. Okay, so before we start the noisy A320 Airbus fans, uh, I thought maybe it'd be good just to have a look at what we're going to do today as a form of briefing. Okay, not that one. <laughs> Let's uh, try and get the correct one, shall we? All right, so just going to bring up the VFR map. And there you can see our aircraft at Ibiza Airport. And uh, basically what we're going to do, as I said, are we going to do some touch and goes? So basically what that means is to take off from the active runway and do left-hand circuits, uh, which basically means you are traveling left from the, it sounds obvious, but um, <laughs> sometimes if you're approaching from the uh, left-hand side of the airport and you're told to join downwind, left downwind, actually you might think joining this side but it's not it's actually left of the active runway so uh, more than likely the active runway is going to be runway 24 so we'll go left crosswind left downwind and proceed out a little bit about 12 or 30 nautical miles and then we'll make a, a left turn on base and then another left turn to pick up the ILS as we are on approach okay so that's basically what we're going to do, simply enough. <laughs> and uh, the other thing I want to actually bring up is this software, Navigraph. Pretty familiar to most flight simmers. Uh, it's paid software and uh, subscription-based, basically. So uh, yeah, that, that's, that's how it is, but really, really useful uh, software. And I've actually got the airport in. Uh, we won't be going anywhere, so it's... From the same airport there, so what I'm going to do is just bring up the uh, bring up the charts list. So we're going to open up the charts list, go to approach, and go to the runway we're possibly going to use it, going to be using. Uh, so we got three uh, letters on the runway two four here. Uh, there's some differences between them. ILS Z Zulu runway two four. ILS Yankee 24 and ILS X Ray 24. Um, some difference, differences with them, uh, but this video is not uh, to go into detail about that. We're just really going to have a look at some information for our particular uh, touch and go task today. So, um, 109.5 is a localizer. Uh, approach course is 242 degrees and uh, interestingly have a look at the airport elevation 24 feet and then at the runway it runs down to 19 feet <laughs> so we've got uh, pretty much a slope going down to the runway so we need to be careful on the brakes that we don't um, we don't heat them up too much and at the same time we don't let the aircraft run away with us and uh, just moving down so we have the uh, range rings, 5, 10, 15. So we'll be joining the ILS round about this point here, Ermot. And then we'll uh, pick that up 
all the way down on approach to the runway. Uh, not, what does it say? It says, do not turn, actually, here it is, not to turn left before Delta uh, Decimal 5 IBA. Well, we won't be doing that anyway because we'll be flying at about three or four nautical miles and then we'll uh, take our left turn on crosswind. Okay, and here's the side profile of the approach. And uh, some key figures here, 180 at glide slope uh, 956, 160, 140, 120. So um, might use the uh, manual speed at one of the touch and goes and see how that uh, see how that works out. Okay, now just another thing before we actually move off from the software is uh, this tab here, Taxi. Uh, what it has, it's, it's very useful actually. It just has information about the airport, which I think is really important uh, when you're flying off from an airport, especially if you're flying a VATSIM. The ATC controllers really do expect you to know the airport. And uh, so, for example, here we got noise abatement procedure now obviously we're in a sim that doesn't affect us but it's actually in advance telling us what the runway will be so runway 24 will be the preferential uh, runway whenever the tailwind component doesn't exceed 10 knots so yeah and it's got useful information like that for example arrival uh, we need to exit via taxiway delta as opposed to going all the way down to the end of the runway it says all, all taxiway hotel 2 so we'll have to actually look where that is and it's a new taxi route proceed to uh, gate bravo via taxiway delta to charlie okay and just other things here taxi procedures and there's other useful information so it's always good to look through this here's one once again some key speed figures uh, 210 knots at 12 DME, uh, 190 at 9 DME, 160 at 4. All right, so yeah, very useful. Uh, okay, so let's just have a look at the airport. So that's where we're currently located at ramp 6 and we'll be taxiing on out round uh, Bravo here and then along Alpha right the way to Hotel 4. Okay, so there's Hotel 2. So yeah, we, we can actually um, exit at the end if we if we can't make Delta. <laughs> okay, uh, so that is it. And the other two here are just parking stands. So yeah, I just thought I'd just show you that briefly uh, while Navigraph is up. Okay, so just uh, getting rid of that for now and look into the aircraft so uh, just before we start the aircraft just check in some preliminary things so make sure the parking brake is set and the flaps and spoilers are in the correct positions engines motor selector is norm engine masters are off and TCAS is in standby okay and landing gear lever is down and looking to the top we have the window wipers are off. Okay, so we can go ahead and just switch on the battery power. Just take a note of the battery voltage, 2.54 volts. Okay, and then we'll switch on the external power. Oh, and there's noisy Airbus fans. Should calm down in a minute. Right, and while we're here, we'll just switch on the ADS. So that's one, two, and three, in that order. Right. Okay, so uh, what we can do first, actually, let's just turn up these uh, PFD lights. And we'll turn those up. And there's your FADEX, which is the full authority digital engine control computers. Let's try and get this one up. A little bit slow, these buttons on the A320neo. OK. 
Okay, and just turning that one up as well, and that one there. Good. All right, and these ones here. That one there, and we should be good to go. Just having a look at the MCDU. We're going to use the diffs rip procedure, what A320 A bus pilots would use just to make sure that they complete the uh, programming of the MCDU completely. Okay, so uh, one of the first pages they will look at is the um, in th this page here. Uh, so you check CFM Leap 1 Alpha 26 engine and check your ARAC, which is in date. Then we go to the data button, position monitor. Check the three navs here, RS1, 2, and 3. And then that's all okay. And then we go straight to the init page. There's two init pages, A and B. We're looking at A first, so we're going to click on our. Uh, we're going to import the airport code, ICAO code, which is Lima Echo India Bravo forward slash Lima Echo India Bravo, and then we'll put that up there into the from to box. Click return here. Okay, cool. And then we're going to put our uh, aircraft. ID. There we are. This is JetBlue, isn't it? So it's uh, Juliet Bravo Uniform. And we'll just give it an annual number 443. And then we'll add Tango to the end of it because we're a training flight. And uh, basically that warns our aircraft to stay out of our way, really. Uh, cost index 20. All right. Cost index. There's a long story behind that. Um, basically, to cut a long story short, it just uh, it's just a way for the airline company to govern how efficiently the aircraft flies. Whether they want it to reach the destination uh, more quicker and save more fuel, etc., etc. So just a business um, feature really for the Airbus cruise altitude. Well, we're not going to go above uh, above three thousand feet, so we'll just put that in there. Okay, and right, so that's that page. Uh, now we can go to the flight plan. Uh, not so much of a flight plan, really. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to um, fly, out, fly out too far. As I said, about 12 nautical miles. Okay, let's just import this. Right, now we don't want SID, so I'll erase that. Uh, erase, and then we'll start again. Departure. Okay, two four. The buttons on this are, are really slow, um, and it really does uh, slow down the input process. So, uh, I hope that the fly-by-wire team actually updates this and get the and the buttons actually working a bit more quicker, a bit more responsive. Right. So let's just pick up the ATIS. So we can do that on one one nine. Uh, eight zero. So we'll do that. Okay, and uh, we can put that on any any one really, in any one of these. Uh, I've actually made a, a tutorial on the Red Nav. Uh, so if you want to have a look at that, just click on the channel link, and uh, you can actually see a full video on the Red Nav. All right. So uh, what we'll do? VF, VHF three. We're on, and we're going to click the call button to bring up the ATIS. Oops, we've got to use the transfer button as well to do that to the active. Okay, Yankee runway. Alright, so we got the information there. We are definitely using ILS24 Yankee. Okay, so no star required. We just insert that. And uh, right, we've got the other information as well. So FR Radnev. Now, we know that the star, the 
ILS, sorry, not the ILS, the VOR, um, I forgot to mention on the um, the approach chart was uh, IBA, so IBA, okay, and that's the VOR that we're sitting on, so you can see there's two there, and that's the one we want, okay, and there you are, and that's it, and that's all we need, that, and that's handy to have because it tells us basically how far out we are traveling, all right, so our secondary flight plan, we uh, not necessary, init page, and now we can go to init page B, Okay, and put in our zero fuel weight and zero fuel weight center of gravity. So we'll just click on this, and there you can see the information is automatically in the scratch pad. And we'll want to click this again to transfer it to the uh, the, the required field. And there we are; it's in in right in the field there. Good. Uh, so we have our center of gravity. We're going to need that actually to set up our uh, our trims. All right, so block fuel. Right, so we're looking at 11.1. .1. So we'll do 11.1, uh, .1 and into the block fuel field. And there we are. And that is our init page B all set up. Okay. And so the last one, last one is the P part of the diff rip procedure. So perf. And uh, to get our V speeds, we just click on V1, and you can see there it's put 121 in the scratch pad. We'll transfer that by clicking the button again. Same for VR2, VR122, and V2126. Okay, and our flaps, we're going to use a flaps 1 takeoff today, and we'll just click it there. THS, we'll talk about uh, our trims in a minute. Okay, uh, we're going to be use, using Toga, so no no flex to temp uh, today, and you can see our flap retraction speed. All right, and uh, next, what we want to do now is go to our approach page, and so we might as well just set this up, really. So we've heard that the Q and H is uh, two two two, or two nine and nine or two, and if we just click this button here. You can see that we've got the Q&H there um, uh, of 1013. All right, so I prefer to use that 1013 and put it to the Q&H field. Temperature is 15 as per ATIS. And also the winds, I believe that was 270 forward slash uh, 07. Okay. Um, right, so that's in, and what we're going to do is just, okay, now that's fine, that's fine, so we can go back, so basically that saves us uh, time later on, and we won't get the enter dest data message there, okay, so that pretty much is, oh, let's go back actually, <laughs> there we are. All right, so uh, that pretty much is the MCDU. Now you can see what it's done for us. It's given us this squiggly um, <laughs> pattern, and that's because it, it doesn't know what we want to do. We want to leave the airport and return immediately, so it's just given us the best um, route out of the airport, it thinks. I don't think it's the best route. And, and then it's returned us. Okay, so, right, right, we're going to be flying out as far as this anyway, as we said, around about, I think, 14... 13 nautical miles out and we're going to come back um, but you note that it's the flight plan is in solid green we don't want it in solid green because if we and when we do press the autopilot on uh, our takeoff roll then it's going to follow that so we don't want it and what we need to do is just turn uh, set up our head in right but notice this when I actually turn the head in um, watch what happens to the numbers and to this selector here indicator it just goes out okay so just turning the dial is not good enough you have to actually pull it out like this and you notice that when we do that the uh, flight plan now is dashed broken lines there so which does mean that uh, it, it does mean that the uh, 
autopilot will not follow this flight plan. Okay, so that's just a little tip in case we didn't know that. Uh, so what we want to do is just turn to a 242 degree heading. So 242. Okay, so if you find that this goes up in increments of 10 when you use the mouse scroll wheel, um, use the mouse left button to click it um, incrementally. All right, uh, we might as well just set up the, oops, put that back in, the FCU. Okay, so we'll, we'll do that while we're here. So a uh, flight director set up on both sides and select the VOR so we can see that there on the left hand side. Uh, we don't need to use any of the constraints uh, buttons today and okay so we have dash 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 ball heading that's manual and we uh, have our altitude 3000 feet and ball and dash 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 so that's fine and that's all set up for us on the uh, FCU the flight control unit okay now just going to the top and what we want to do is just go through our uh, cockpit preparation uh, just to make sure that that is all set up nicely for us okay so just going through our flow so looking from the left hand side going up we need to try and make sure the white lights are turned off uh, which they are we know the ADs are on then going back down to the uh, bottom panel uh, we can turn our taxi light on and we'll leave the rest until we are about to take off and we strobe we can put that on nav we'll put that on as well uh, we can turn this down to low as it's just uh, us on and we'll put that up uh, one cabin crew on board as he wants to practice his announcements <laughs> uh, fuel pumps turn off actually while we're here we'll switch to APU on as it takes a bit of, a, a while to actually uh, spool up so we'll click that APU master switch wait three seconds one, two, three, and then we'll click start. Okay, and fire test. APU fire test. That's all okay. All right, and just looking for this this part here. Uh, we'll turn on the big, not beacon, sorry, the seat belts, and that one as well, and also the emergency. Uh, lights. Make sure the landing elevation selector is on uh, auto. Okay, and uh, that is about it on the right hand side. I think we're good to go there. Right. So, that's all good. And just having a look at our APUs. Uh, there, that's uh, spooling up which is good okay so once that spools up then we can actually um, okay throttle we need to check that that's on idle I don't think I did that on the preliminary, <laughs> preliminary uh, start up there so uh, yeah it is on idle okay so I'm just looking through a checklist uh, on my left hand side, left hand screen. So yeah, we've got uh, battery one and two, external power, nav lights, engine masters one and two, check off, engine master selector, landing gear levers down, parking brake, flaps lever, that's set to zero, uh, speed brake lever, we did check that, thrust lever, that's on idle, APU fire tests, transponder mode, that's um, on standby, all the radio control panels are on. Ecam, Ecam recall. Uh, we can just check that and press the recall button. Okay, that's normal. If there was anything on the uh, system 
uh, display, then you'd have an STS right here indicator. So if you don't see that, there's no need to check it, really. Uh, no smoking signs are on, and uh, wing and engine antis are not required at the moment, so they're off. Probe window heat, they're all in the normal positions. Hot, hot air, engine bleed, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah. Okay, all fuel pumps are on. Accu brake pressure is pressurized. <laughs> and yeah, okay, it is are on. And GPS, uh, GPWS, all switches are on. Okay. Right, so. Okay, so we'll just. The FCU is all set up, so what we'll do now. I think we're basically ready to uh, push back. So there's no clearance, so we're going to have to actually get ourselves pushed back. And then we'll call for taxi as and when we're ready for it. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is actually put the APU bleeds on. So we have a veil there on the APU, which means we're ready to go for the APU bleed. Okay, so we'll put the APU bleeds on. Okay, because we're going to go for engine start pretty soon. We'll put the beacons on as well. We'll make sure that we turn off the uh, external power so we don't pull the ground car with us. Okay, so that is off. And uh, what we're going to do now is just check our before pushback and start checklist. Okay, so make sure we do that. Right, so doors, all doors are closed and windows as well. APU master and start is on, APU bleed is on, external power supply is off, that's been confirmed. Uh, seat belt signs, no smoking are on, levers are checked idle, parking brake is set to on. Yep, it is. <laughs> and... Okay, we've got no traffic cones or wheel chocks, borrow ref, uh, we sorted that out, transponder, uh, we can put that to... Uh, auto right here okay and beacon is on all right so we're going to go for uh, we're going to go for pushback without engine start okay right so let us Uh, let us call for uh, radio and then we're going to call for pushback. Actually, do you know what? Before we actually get pushback, I think it will be good to actually check uh, behind us to make sure that there's nothing behind us. Okay, and uh, we'll just get uh, ground services, IBs at ground, and we'll request pushback. Now, the pushback tug uh, doesn't give you any warning. Doesn't give you any warning that it's going to push you back. So, uh, basically, uh, yeah, when it starts pushing back, because the thing is, if I took the parking brake off now, you can actually roll forward into the uh, pushback tug. So um, I'm just going to be ready on the parking brake uh, when, it, when, when I feel it starts to push back. Now with the pushback tug, if you want to turn left or right, because it can be a bit confusing, um, basically from our position, left is right, right is left. Okay, there we go. So let's just take this off. All right, so uh, what you want to do, I, I want to turn, go to my left, so we'll request, oh, not that one. Okay, please steer to the left. Alright, so basically the way you've got to look at it is that even though the nose is actually turning to our right, the, the cockpit, uh, we have to go from 
look at it from the uh, the tail end point of view. And uh, that's the way the tug actually operates from its point of view. I think that should be out. That should be enough. Okay, so we request stop. And there we are. Are you ready for the parking brake? Excellent. So that is done. All right. Those lights up a bit. Okay, so uh, basically we can go for a start. So engine mode selector will select. Oh, sorry. Oh, see these buttons here. Can you see how you can make mistakes? <laughs> Let's just reset that. Okay. Right, let's do the correct one, shall we? Okay, so let's uh, turn that to ignition and we're going to go for engine start. Obviously, we'd um, make sure if we had GSX, we'd actually get clearance to do that. So, engine number two will start and so we can see here now this. A uh, grey box behind the N2 indicator is basically another indication that N2 is the inner turbines is actually sp spooling up and uh, around about 20% see or just below that it starts turning the N1s which we can see here Okay, so I think that is actually all spooled up now. And okay, so it's got the avail light on, and basically what that means is that we can actually go ahead and start engine number one. All right, so we'll do that, engine number one. And that is all running up for us nicely. All right, so engine number two, we have a successful start, 19.5 there and that will be uh, starting up for us in just a few moments and then we should be uh, we'll check the before taxi checklist actually before we do that we'll do the after engine start checklist that'll be more uh, appropriate Fifteen percent, N one seventeen eighteen. Ah, there you go. Available. Good. So uh, that is that. All right. And now we just want to go for after engine start checklist. So engine mode selector. We will uh, put back to norm. Okay. APU bleed off. APU master switch will switch off. Ground spoilers will set to arm. Flaps one, a rudder trim, make sure it's zeroed out. Okay, so next up on the checklist are pitch trims. Now, as you can see, you've got two scales. You've got the up and down scale, which uh, you'll be familiar with. And just next to it, you have the outer scale, which is the uh, C of G scale which is obviously the center of gravity. Now, some airlines actually don't recommend that their pilots use the 
up and down scale uh, due to the possibility of um, confusion while setting them. So they used the C of G scale. Now, you may remember uh, back on the MCDU, the init page B, just scrolling across there, okay, and you have zero fuel weight and zero fuel weight descent of gravity. Now, which in this case is 24.5. So we take those figures, we go back to our pitch trim, and just using the outer scale, you can see 25 there. Scroll down a little bit, okay, and roughly about here would be 24. All right, so uh, there's no markings on this scale. You see 20 there, and you can see uh, between 20 and 25, uh, roughly about here. Uh, you, you can have a look at the uh, triangle indicator there going across, and roughly there would be, say, 24.5. So it's pretty much guesswork, but you know, once you once you set it there, then you, you should be okay, should be good to go. Engine and Tice are not required at the moment as we are at a cool and comfortable, well not cool actually, 15 degrees, okay, reasonable here in Ibiza. Uh, so no engine and Tice required at the moment. And Ecam status, we'll just check that. Uh, Ecam status is, uh, we'll check that, let's have a look. That's fine. Uh, like I said, I didn't need to check it, but it's just a false habit, really. Uh, okay, so, yeah. There's nothing there on the uh, status display. Okay, and a door page, we did check that. That's fine. And, right. Okay, so we've got taxi. Okay, so we'll uh, taxi. We want to uh, check the takeoff data. So we've got 121 blue, 126 magenta, climb blue, one flight director two, and 3000 blue, and toga. Excellent. All right, so uh, we just reviewed the takeoff data, and the FCU is all set up. And we want to have a look at our takeoff uh, landing, sorry, takeoff uh, land, takeoff checklist. <laughs> and so we click max for the auto brakes cabin. We can actually uh, click here. And uh, we can then select our takeoff config button. And that's given us a little warning there for the predictive wind shear button which is this one so we'll make sure we'll just turn that okay good and then we have uh, take off no blues there all right all right so what we can do is actually do you know while we're here actually we can actually go and check our flight control so forward forward neutral full aft neutral full left neutral, full right, neutral, and rudder. Now, uh, the rudder pedal disconnect button, which is this one here, is not yet modeled. So uh, ordinarily, you would actually click that to stop the nose gear from uh, ruining about six months of tire life. <laughs> but at the moment, we haven't got that luxury in this uh, A320neo. But the rudders are working. Excellent uh, brake flan fans. They are not. That's not uh, modelled yet. So you actually uh, can click that, and which will cool the brakes down if they get hot. And right, so T A R A. We won't do that until we um, get uh, onto the uh, holding point. Okay. So what we'll do now is just request. Uh, we'll request our taxi uh, permission. So we're going to request a taxi remaining pattern as we're doing touch and go.
Okay, so we have our clearance, so let's just uh, begin taxi. Right, and like we said, there's going to be a runoff down to the uh, no, that down to the runway. Notice how fast we're taxiing down already. So, just trying to set up this uh, track IR. If you notice, I've switched it on already. Ninety degree turn should be about ten nautical miles per hour. We're at nine, so we're doing just fine on that one. Trying to get this nose wheel a bit sensitive at the moment to just go in the middle. So that's that's round about our nose wheel there. So can you, know, you notice how fast we're actually running down? 18 already. Taxiing is about uh, 30, 30 nautical miles. 21 already. Twenty-seven. So we're going to touch brakes a little bit. Thirty one. Take it down a bit. Robbie, take it down. There we go. Okay. So you notice that the brakes uh wheel page is up because obviously when you're taxiing, uh you need to keep an eye on those temperatures and the temperatures are actually modelled for us in uh, this A three twenty. Alright, so coming up to another 90 degree bend here, so what we're going to do is just take it right down and maybe get a little early turn on the nose wheel just to ensure we get around this corner. Slowing, slowing it right down so we can creep up. Quite powerful brakes here on the A320 uh, Airbus, and really, truly, if you know if you're actually on a commercial flight and you touch these brakes too hard, then and you, you've you've got uh, cabin crew still walking about, <laughs> you can actually you know throw them around, and we don't want to do that. It can be quite embarrassing. Okay, so uh, just holding the aircraft with the tow brakes, and I'm going to put the parking brake on. Okay, and there you go. So, uh, right now, before takeoff, uh, we've partially done that. So, what we want to do is uh, just select our TCAS to TARA. All right, 
and anti skid nozzle steering that is on and right so once we receive clearance oops we will uh, taxi on out to the runway set our chrono which I always forget <laughs> always forget and then we'll proceed with our takeoff okay And making sure that this is on our perf page as well. Good. Okay, so we'll just call ATC. Twin Tower. Oops, no. Well, we, there's no. We, we can actually contact or listen to the ATIS. Still two four. Right, it's not a hotel. Okay, so let's tune tower. Oops. Here we go. Okay, cool. We are cleared for takeoff. So, parking brake. We'll hold the brakes uh, with the hold the aircraft with the tow brakes, and we'll take parking brake off. And we'll just make sure that the uh, approach is clear, and which it is. And so we'll just give it a little bit of throttle. And we'll slowly move on to the runway and we'll line up. Looks like it's going to be a nice evening. Look at that. Notice how quickly we've just rolled around the corner. Oh my goodness. Okay, and push forward on the side stick and just raise the uh, N1s to about 50% and just allow the aircraft to engines to stabilize. Release the brakes and go to full toga. Announce Mantoga SRS runway, auto throttle is blue and armed. And we're looking for 80 knots to 100 knots, release the pressure, V1, rotate at about 3 degrees per second. And then we'll raise the landing gear. Now we're looking for our lever climb. Click, click. And we just put the nose down a little. Just turn out on left heading. Did forget about the flaps. <laughs> One.
Right, so we'll try and get up to our... Designated altitude of 3000. And yeah, just leveling out now at 15. Selecting also pilots. Actually, what we'll do is. Selecting our 062 heading. Okay, after takeoff checklist is flaps up and retracted. We'll go a little bit late <laughs> after S speed. Ground spoilers are down. Uh, we'll keep the runway. Uh, nose. We keep the runway lights on because uh, we'll be landing very soon. I don't want to give ourselves too much work. And just set the packs are on, which they are. Okay, I selected autopilot a little bit later than I normally would. That's because I've um, been having trouble with the uh, rotation on uh, this particular model of the A320 flyby wire Neo. So I just thought I'd fly out manually. And then when the uh, flight director has settled down a bit, I just put it into auto. Otherwise, you've got this, I've got this bobbing up and down uh, kind of motion on the aircraft. All right, so we're going to go out to, as we said, about 50 nautical miles. So what we can do now is turn on the landing system. And then you can see the magenta diamond, uh, which we're dead on now at the moment. So we can literally just turn now, uh, if we can keep this heading, and uh, try and select approach. But, um, well, well, we'll just go down to the... To the um, uh, distance that we sent. So it's 10 nautical miles now. And the airport's gone past us, right? Right, so what we're going to do to slow down is to use the approach page all right so we can actually use uh, fully into thinking that we're actually going to land right now and it's going to help us to slow down and then we'll uh, watch out for our speeds and uh, then we'll put the flaps down all right so where we are at the moment 12 all right just a little bit more Turn these lights up. All 
it's good that track IR is working with this now uh, so I can actually select my uh, windows not windows sorry my um, my cams and also uh, use track IR so it's really good all right so just turning on our heading of uh, 333 how that came up I don't know oops let's turn it off get it off that's really crazy I think I pressed the um, I'm not sure what's going on there. <laughs> that was weird. Um, yeah, the mouse wheel, if I click on the mouse wheel, if I press it, it's set to bring up the, um, the, the menu. And that's because I've got it set up for VR. Right, let's try and get this. All right, I think we better start thinking about actually turning a bit more. what it's doing to be honest with you come on turn there we go let's just turn right I'm not quite sure what that was doing so we're 21 nautical miles out way out way further than I wanted to go Let's use the range and see where we are. Okay, so a little bit further out and we'll get, get back on track. Not too, too bad, actually. Okay, so we'll level out about 3, 3.13. Head in. Alright. Cool. Takes a, takes a while to get to grips with this Airbus. It really does. All its various systems and peculiarities. But frequent use, yeah, you get used to it. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> really nice. Don't forget your screenshots. Sun hiding behind the cloud there. Really nice. Lovely. What a view. That's crazy nice, isn't it? Alright, okay, so I'm going to just turn on to our heading and select approach. So we have localizers being captured and glide slope. Uh, waiting for that to be uh, captured as well. Right, okay, I'm going to select the approach page. Confirm that. Slow the aircraft down a bit. Okay, take it off 
actually, I'm going to, oh, there it is. There's the uh, runway just down there. Uh, what I'm going to do, actually, is just... I need to actually get the head in more on the runway, because I know what's going to happen. So let's just take it off autopilot, and let's just... Just trying to bring it in a bit more closer to the uh, runway heading. Alright, so we're low, we are below 200. Let's select the first stage and then second stage of flats. And then I'm going to select approach. Okay, so we got glide slope and localizer has been captured. Let's see what it's doing now. Oops. Okay, so it looks like we're on target for the runway. Uh, climb glide slope, GS. Uh, just trying to climb a bit as we are 11 nautical miles out still. And that's coming down now, good. Now, all I need for that is to say uh, GS on top. Speed is about 140, and they're going to lower the landing gear at 6 nautical miles. Amazing sunset, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. Wow, look at those clouds. Okay, approach checklist. Right, so we've captured the uh, glide slope. Uh, Ecam message. No, there's nothing there for us. And, oops. Yeah, everything there is the same. Uh, we should have actually got our. Oh, it's got landing intentions there, anyway. So I haven't heard from the controller for ages. Right, so seven nautical miles. Uh, we can start putting the landing gear down now. Let's try and do that, shall we? And spoilers and flaps three. OK, 
Okay, cabin. And flaps full. Okay, so cabin secured, auto throttle is set, and go around altitude is set, and landing checklist, no blues. About 3.3 .3 nautical miles out now. Okay, so I'm going to take it off autopilot and just fly it in. More looking at the uh, looking at the runway heading now. I'm just trying to. going to select my landing point and just try and point the nose. If you have a look at the um, upper ECAM, you can see this purple message. It's called landing inhibit, which means that the system recognizes you're in a critical stage of stage of flight and basically it's just inhibited some of some of the uh, less lesser warnings if you like. Okay, raise the flaps, one stage, full throttle, tow gar, V1, rotate, positive rate, gear up. Looking for lever climb now. Click, click. Raising the flaps. And releasing the flaps completely. And just turning on to our 150. Head in once again. Still climbing to our target altitude of 3,000 feet. I think this one's gone a, lot, <laughs> gone a lot better than the first one. But that's what it's all about, isn't it? And leveling out now at fifteen hundred or one thousand uh, <laughs> at one five zero degrees. Okay, selecting autopilot. Oops, that's that's gone into. Oh yeah, approach. 
don't forget to click <laughs> click off approach because um, just after your touch and go because I, I found that if it's if you leave it on um, it's going to try and track the runway heading once again so yeah another thing to uh, just watch out for all right so it's trying to straighten up on uh, 150 Alright, so that island in front of us is San Francisco Javier Island. Uh, okay, let's just turn to our 06. I've actually been to Ibiza uh, way back in the uh, 80s uh, when I was uh, just a teenager. It's quite a popular destination for young Brits. Not sure what it's like now. Had a really good party scene. Right, so FMA is reading speed, alt cruise, and heading. So they're the modes that we're in at the moment. And then you can see our selected heading 062. And there's our runway. Oh, look at those clouds in front of us. <laughs> They're the kind of clouds you don't you don't fly fly through if you can help it. Um, it contain a lot of en energy and uh, might throw the aircraft about a bit. Right, so I'm going to try not to go out so far uh, this time. Uh, we'll just switch on the landing system again. And there's a runway in the rear window. So this version is not the um, latest version of the uh, A320 uh, fly-by-wire Neo. Uh, apparently on that version, the later version, I think it's the, the developer version, you have um, the uh, new rotate laws, which apparently is, is very, very good. So you just got pulled back, rotate to about maybe three degrees as normal and uh, it will just do the rest for you, bring it up to that uh, correct pitch. Okay, so, uh, wow, those clouds. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're surrounded by them. About a thousand feet they are. <clears throat> so, I'm going to start turning now. Uh, onto our heading as we're at our point here. So let's just turn this to. I'm going to turn to 333.
Okay, how far are we? So 15 nautical miles. Okay, that's okay. <clears throat> and just turn the aircraft slightly so we can uh, try and intercept that ILS. Okay, so we should still uh, see the localizer coming across and the glide slope as well coming down. Right, we're going to uh, do the same thing. Approach. Confirm approach. Okay, so the aircraft now is uh, slowing down. 240. Okay, so we can click the approach now. And there you are, it's turning the aircraft nicely. We've got GS there in blue. Localizer star. When you see the uh, flashing boxes around the uh, indicators, it just means that it's trying to get your attention. Something's changed on the FMA, so... We need to look at it and check it out, basically. Right, so 200. We can apply the first stage of flats. I could do that at 220, really. And the second. So once again, we're going to drop the uh, lower the landing gears at 6 nautical miles. And we're nicely on our glass slope localizer approach for the runway. Okay, about six nautical miles, so we'll just lower the landing gear. Spoilers up, flaps to three, and we can go straight to four. And cabin. Okay, so we are uh, cabin is secure, auto throttle is on at speed, and go around altitude is set. Landing checklist no blues. Once again, forgot to set the chrono. Oh my goodness. Ah, it's crazy. One 
Okay, autopilot deselected. And just flying the aircraft in manually. And once again, just looking at the threshold of the runway and trying to land around about the piano keys. It actually looks lower than what you are, uh, but you know you, you seem to think you're 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 too low. But uh, yeah, it's, it's it's okay. Not so much looking at the uh, landing system now. Just trying to really get a feel for uh, that touchdown zone. Flaps up one stage, full toga, main SRS runway, auto throttle blue, V1, Too low, rot terrain. rotate. Too low, terrain. And Too low, terrain. Too low, terrain. gear up, Too low, positive terrain. climb, gear up. Raise the flaps once again. And we're at S, and then we can raise the flaps. And now we're at green dot speed. And select and leave a climb. And just turning out to our One five zero heading. Select an autopilot, uh, taking the approach off actually, first of all, and getting our heading set. Now we can click autopilot. And adjusting our heading to 150. Good. Okay, now just turning back again to our zero six two. So what we'll do, we'll do one more of these touch and goes, and uh, I think on the last one I'm going to fly the aircraft right around. And there's Ibiza, lighting up for the evening. Very nice. So it takes some getting used to. I mean, <laughs> I, I've, I've still got lots of stuff to uh, learn about this aircraft. I suppose like most of us, really, um, unless you're a real Airbus pilot. Um, but then even the Airbus pilots are learning. Uh, some have said that, you know, years 
after flying an Airbus, they discover something new. Look at the skyline. Wow. Look at the hues on that. Microsoft done a really excellent job on the simulator. Alright, so I uh, need to take spoilers off. Alright, so how far out are we? Six, eight point seven nautical miles. Alright, so we'll go a little bit further once again. So this time I'm actually not going to use the um, MCDU approach page method. I'm gonna select the speed manually. Do you remember those key figures we spoke about? Is it one, one, uh, 210, 190, 180, that's where you'll lower, lower the landing gear, and 140 and 120. Let's have a look at our V approach. Uh, let's have a look at this. Right, so V approach 123, and landing is... Uh, one one eight. Wondered why the ball wasn't on that. <laughs> I think it was just um, manually actually flying on that uh, altitude. All right. So where are we now? 13. 13. I'll leave a little bit more. So let's make our turn in. So three, 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 three heading. Let's do that before we go travel out too far. It's getting quite dark, isn't it? So seventeen nautical miles out. Okay, not not too bad. Not bad. Did you notice uh, upon landing it said flare? Just have a look at the, uh, the FMA as we actually land. You can see some of the other messages it actually comes out with. It's weird the clouds are all down there and not actually over the airport. I left it clear for me. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do now is manually slow the aircraft down. So we're going to the uh, first stage of flaps. Actually, let's go to 210. 
minus 210. And I'm just going to adjust the head in to about 28 so we can slice the ILS, if you like, just intercept it at that head in. The 280, okay, cool. Right, so we, we can select the first stage of flaps. These equal signs here, these brown, two brown parallel lines, they are VFE next. And basically they just give you an indication as to when you can actually uh, select your flap setting. You notice it moves down when I actually change the flaps. All right, it's 210, so uh, let's go down to 190. And then we'll turn our head in. Oops, not that. Oh dear. Click approach. Select flaps two. And go down to 180. Okay, localizer has been captured. Notice the box around. Localizer is there, magenta diamond, and uh, hopefully the glide slope as well will be armed. Right, so we're still 12 nautical miles out, 12.3 actually, and uh, so we're not going to lower the landing gear till about 6. Seems pretty close really, you'd have thought that they would have put the landing gears down by now, but no, that's what they do in the real world, around about 6 nautical miles. You could actually just use the localizer uh, as well. Right, 180, let's bring it down to about 160. Uh, we're 10 nautical miles out. And then we can, no, still not lower the landing gear yet. I was just going to do that. Right, 160. All right. And now, the hopefully, the glide slope should be captured. So that'll go from blue, armed blue, to... There we go, captured, and you got the box around it. Auto throttle is speed, and both flight directors are on. 8.8, 8 8.5 nautical miles. And that's configured as it's always been. Right, so we'll just take the speed down a bit to about 140. Now we're at 6.4 nautical miles, so we'll lower the landing gear. Okay, cabin secured. Spoilers. I've got three greens, and we'll just uh, put all the uh, flaps down and arm the spoiler. Okay, so cabin is secured. Auto throttle is speed. Go around altitude is set. Landing memo, no blues.
town looks nice, doesn't it? <laughs> wow. All right, so I need to actually bring the speed down a bit to our approach speed of 120 or 118 actually, 123. Then we can go to actually 118. Okay, so I'm going to de deselect the autopilot and also the auto throttle. Not auto throttle, sorry. <laughs> Approach. I don't want to deselect auto throttle. Seem to be going really slow. And just looking for that touchdown zone. Past the piano keys, actually. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, retard, drive. Okay, up one stage of flaps. V1. Rotate. Too low terrain. Too low terrain. Gear up. Too low terrain. Too low terrain. I can grab it. Too low terrain. Flaps up another stage. And speed brakes off. Just lower the nose a bit. Okay, reaching S speed. Going into Mantoga. Not Mantoga, sorry. <laughs> Auto throttle, speed, select. And we need to actually go to... Well, did you note that I had my speed selected and it was still 118? I noticed why my speed was dropping. And uh, yeah, I just noticed that. It's one of the things I should look out for. When you're uh, selecting everything manual. All right, so that heading once again of 150 degrees, and I'm just going to fly the aircraft around myself. Right, so uh, spoilers are up and flaps are off. Flaps are up. Okay, so turning on now, uh, 062 degree heading.
I'm going to straighten it out now. Loading out slowly. So auto throttle is keeping me at 250 uh, very nicely. So even though I'm flying manually, uh, it's still good to actually set the heading uh, it, it, in case you want to go to uh, autopilot, it's already actually there for you. Right, so... Uh, so we actually want to cancel that, but we'll have to acknowledge it first. Okay, and now we can actually go ahead and select nearest airport. Oops, gone back. And I beefer. Get the ATIS. Okay, so we've got India. Right. Tune tower and request full stop landing. Press the wrong one. <laughs> I've actually got some of the responses, the numbers set up on my uh, mouse hat. Okay, so we've got our clearance. Good. Alright, so we're 12 nautical miles out. Gonna go a little bit further. Right, 14 nautical miles, so I'll just going to turn now to uh, heading of 333. And get the aircraft slowed down. Just a minute. Okay, so uh, I need this approach. Right, what's it saying here? Uh, let's have a look. No, it's not actually giving me that what I had last time. All right. Okay. 
Let's see what happens. Well, I wonder why that is. Interesting. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> right, okay, I'm going to turn. Actually, gone past that a little bit, so we'll just. Uh, we got some time. We got fifth some miles. So we got 15 nautical miles. Uh, we'll just turn. Watching our bank angle. So I've gone out a little bit more than what I wanted. I think I was trying to look for that approach page. Okay, no worries. We'll we'll straighten up. Okay, approach mode. And we'll try and capture that. There we go. All right, so this will be our full stop landing. We're just watching out for that localizer coming across right about now. To be followed soon by the glass slope. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we can put the first stage of flaps out, and also the second stage as well. And I need to line myself up with the runway. And make sure this time, uh, speed managed is selected. So flaps two. Okay, and I think flight director is trying to uh, guide me now. The landing system. It knows I'm doing it myself. Probably wondering why. <laughs> okay, how far are we? Where's that's eight? No, we want drop uh, lower the landing gear. Yeah. Just making sure I'm not going to go too low, actually. I want to keep that glide slope diamond right dead on the bar. There we go. I'm actually using a warthog throttle system joystick, and yeah, and um, because I like the left hand seat, the captain seat, I'm, I've actually had to reverse. Um, put the, the side stick, which is meant for your right hand. Uh, put that on my left. So it's it's not ideal. So everything is like in reverse. Okay, spoilers. Landing gear down. Okay, done it the opposite way. Should have done uh, landing gear first and then spoilers. But there you go. Right, so a little bit too low to watch out for that. And okay, flaps full. Right, better acknowledge her. All right, so 
uh, once again, landing checklist, uh, cabin is secure. Go around altitude, auto throttle, sorry, is speed. Go around altitude is set and we're landing no blues. So once again, just looking out now, uh, trying to pick that landing touchdown zone. Trying to ignore the pappy <laughs> and also uh, the landing system. Trying to get a center line if I can. Retard. Okay. Whoops, you know what I forgot. One thing I forgot is um well, let's get on the landing line. I did forget the auto brakes, but you, you don't always have to use auto brakes. Okay, so I think we've missed we've missed uh, taxiway Delta. No worries, we'll take a hotel. Wow, okay, so uh, I'll just put the parking brake on, actually, okay. Uh, right, and uh, we'll just clean up. Decas off. Okay, and... Uh, turn these lights off. Oh, that one off actually. That one was off. <laughs> okay, well look. These were off. Can you believe it? Oh, crazy. Right, so landing lights wasn't, wasn't on. Uh, anyway, there you go. Landing. <laughs> uh, learning curve. Right, okay. Um... Right, that's about it. I actually thought these lights were on. They looked on, but no, they weren't. There you go. Live and learn. All right, um, let's contact my booth of ground. Give me ground, Jet Blue Juliet, Bravo Uniform, 443 Tango Taxi to parking. Jet Blue Juliet, Bravo Uniform, 443 Tango Taxi to General Aviation. Using taxiway alpha. 
Taxiing to General Aviation Parking using Taxiway Alpha Chat Blue Juliet Bravo Uniform 443 Tango. Okay, so. I think when we get there, we'll just kind of like uh, find our own space. Oh, come on. There you go. All right, so let's just taxi on round. Auto brakes, we can actually take off. Well, that's it. <laughs> that's uh, touch and goes actually doing a lot of bit and make sure I don't miss this uh, taxiway turn off. That's it. So, you know, um, wasn't perfect, but uh, a few things went and missed. But there you go. Uh, landings were, were okay. And yeah, improvements to be made in various areas. So. And that's what it's all about. Okay, just watching the taxi speed there. Uh, I was at 30. So we're just trying to bring it down because I'm not sure where this turn off is going to be. It might come up very soon, which it has right about now. Okay, so we just slow the aircraft down. And just turn a little bit early. Is our spot free? <laughs> Let's have a look. I'm not sure. I can't see. Is there an aircraft there? No, there isn't. Cool. Okay. Oops. Bit sudden stop there. Get our spot back. Oh, look, we've got a little, uh, I didn't know they had this. <laughs> we got a marshaller. Cool. Now, he's going to disappear, you see. Look, he's going to disappear. That, that's, that's really good, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, Microsoft, you've got to adjust that. Um, I tell you what, let me have a look outside and see what he's doing. What's he saying? What's he, what's he doing? All right, he's, he's still got the right hand up. Um, I can't control it from this angle, I have to go inside. Uh, let's see what he's saying now. Okay. Uh, maybe a bit more forward. Let's see what he's saying now. All right. Just a tiny bit forward. All 
Oops. No, no, this ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. I think I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. It's right underneath the nose of the aircraft. No, we'll leave it there. All right. Uh, parking brake on. Good. Right, so the other thing I forgot to do, um, APU should have gone on uh, once we uh, came to uh, a stop. Okay, APU should have been on really, uh, but there you go. Right, so while that's running up, uh, we'll just have a quick uh, review, really. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm overall, I'm pretty pleased with that. And um, yeah, as I said before, I've got um, areas where we can, where I can actually improve. And uh, yeah, that's what it's all about, touch and goes. Uh, so I uh, probably will be uh, doing maybe uh, some of those, but not as a video. Uh, next one will be a flight for me to be. Uh, I want to try and do a flight on Vatsim as well and see how that goes now that I'm pretty much used to the... Uh, actually, do you know what? It's not going to help if you don't press start. And I think what we can do is put um, external power on as well. Okay, so anyway, thank you very much for watching. I do hope you uh, enjoyed the video, learned something, or maybe if there's uh, something that I could, you, uh, I, information I could need, I uh, could improve on, then uh, yeah, do leave it in the, in the uh, notes below. That'd be really appreciated. So, thank you very much for joining me on this uh, base training touch and go flight. Really do appreciate that. And I uh, just look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Bye for now.